Always Mine by Samadhi W. Chapter 2 Ah, Miss Granger, we've been waiting for you. McGonagall greeted sternly, gesturing to the chair next to the Southern Pratt. Marnie hated that Malfoy had come before her. How did he get to the headmistress's office so quickly? He slumped over the chair, hair falling across his pale face, watching in amusement as she sat. Finally broke free from the disgusting flubberworm, he asked, amused, hoping to get a rise out of her. He was about to fire back when McGonagall silenced him with a stern look. He brought her fingers together and advised, Now, I want these petty differences to be put aside, Mr. Malfoy. You and Miss Granger must work together as head boy and girl. You must set a good example for the younger students. McGonagall explained calmly, hoping against hope that they would get along. Draco rolled his eyes exacerbatedly. Was the old bat for real? Did she actually fucking believe that he was going to body up with Granger and act all peachy? No bloody way. He could not stand Granger and the other impulsive morons she called friends. The both of you will be sharing a dormitory. McGonagall informed next, looking for a piece of parchment with the password to their dorm. She knew that bit of information would not be so well perceived. Draco snapped out of his daze and asked louder than he intended. Excuse me? McGonagall raised a questioning eyebrow. Yes, Mr. Malfoy. Do you have a problem? Clearly, he did. He sputtered angrily. Bloody hell I do. I'm not sharing my living quarters with a Gryffindor maniac. Hermione was indignant and quick to defend. As if I want to live with a Death Eater wannabe. Did he think she wanted to live with him? Merlin, no. Not for a second. You said they're in Pret, she thought to herself. He was about to retaliate when McGonagall raised her hand and silenced them both. Enough! The headmistress massaged the bridge of her nose and sighed. This is not up for debate. If you two have a problem with it, by all means, hand over your badges. Draco sunk further into the chair, and Hermione purposely averted her gaze and stared at the cupboard full of trophies. When no one moved, McGonagall cleared her throat. It's it, then. Please head to your dorm and be here by seven tomorrow with the prefect to discuss the way forward. She waved her hands to dismiss them pulled the parchment towards her, and started to write. Marnie pushed past Draco and made her way to the head storm. He watched her stalk away with an amused expression. Hermione took out the parchment with the password outside the large wooden door and almost whispered it. The door unlocked at once. Excitedly, she pushed it open and entered the large living space. Hands on hip, she looked around and smiled. It was quite cosy and pretty, They had a small kitchen with basic needs, a large study table, two sofas and a few beanbags, jammed with books and magazines, a large shelf decorated the wall by the window. Hermione smiled and looked around the space they would share for the next year. She practically ran to her room to find all her belongings had already been brought up and the decoration in the room was just to her liking. She plopped down on the bed and looked around in awe. The room was bright with red and yellow lamps, painting of flowers, a soft yellow wallpaper, and a huge Gryffindor banner. The band seemed comfortable with plenty of pillows in various colours. There was a door to her right, which she assumed had to be the bathroom. She jumped to her feet and opened the door. A gasp escaped her lips. It was massive, with a large shower cubicle and jacuzzi. Benefits of being the chosen hat girl. Hermione wrapped her arms around herself and squealed the bubble bath and long showers she would have. She was practically giddy with happiness. A voice startled her and she jumped out of her skin. You impress easily, Granger. Have you never seen a bathroom before? He muttered under his breath. Weasley would die of shock. 
Draco looked around the bathroom lazily, from the doorway to his room. Uh, looks like we're sharing the bathroom. He smirked and purposely let his eyes rove over her body. He licked his lips and winked. That should be fun. Hermione went towards him angrily, but Draco grabbed her across the waist and pulled her into his room. His face was dangerously close to hers, and despite their promptness, she had her own. Looking him directly in the eyes, Hermione hissed, Let's get something straight. I would not sleep with or touch you if the human race depended on it. Draco laughed sarcastically and tugged on her hair. You have no idea what you're missing, pet. She struggled out of his grasp and quickly looked around his room. It was very modern and allergen. Everything down to the lamp was either black, silver or green. The bed he had was far larger than hers with expensive silk bedding compared to her basic cotton. It made sense since he was over a foot taller than her. His voice cut into her thoughts. Let's set some fucking round rules since I have to see a pathetic face every day. Crossing her arms across her chest, she eyed him in annoyance and spat. Go on, Malfoy. Draco stepped back, leaned against a mahogany study desk and eyed her intently. He cleared his throat and hissed. I don't want to see you snogging the Weasley fucker every time I walk into the dorm. He added spitefully. Take whatever the hell you want to do inside your fucking room. Hermione waited for him to continue, but he stared at her, expecting a reply. Quite surprised by his only term, she nodded and fired back. Fine, Malfoy, I'm listening. She cocked her head to the side and grinned. As long as you keep your conquest to your room, I don't want random girls loitering around the common room. Draco glared at the fiery Gryffindor. Just stay the fuck out of my way, Granger. Let's speak if and only when required. Hermione huffed, turned on her heel and yelled over her shoulder. Fine by me, Malfoy. Fuck! He yelled after her bushy hair disappeared from his line of sight. It was early. Hermione had always been an early riser. Already dressed, she adjusted her hair. Her wild hair had tamed itself with age. She was so grateful for that that she pulled it back into a high ponytail. Draco watched a shapely girl from the shadows of his room. It calmed him to watch her movements. The muscles on her neck rippled. The school shirt hugged her waist snugly, and her breasts were perky and bounced with every movement. He hadn't noticed that before. It was a disturbing thought. He shook his head and whirled such thoughts away. She had forgotten to lock the door, probably oblivious to his existence, but it gave him a front-seat view of her getting ready. It was time to have a little fun with the Gryffindor princess. Draco smirked, stripped down, and tied a towel around his waist. It hung loosely on his hips. One fast move, and it was fall unceremoniously to the floor. He worked out religiously to keep his seeker physique toned and fit. Was appealing, or so he had been told by more women than he could count. Draco watched Hermione move and sway her hips. Was she deliberately trying to entice him? He cocked his head to the side, and his eyes moved in time with the sensual movement of her hips. Bloody hell, did she always have that gorgeous ass? The years had changed her, and despite the frumpy uniform, only an idiot wouldn't be able to see the beauty she possessed shook his head again, walked boldly into the bathroom and asked innocently, Are you done, Granger? She turned to face him, nearly jumping out of her skin, and wished she hadn't. She nearly choked on her words. Ah, uh, yes, almost. Her eyes roved over his body shamelessly. Snickering, he ignored her and grasped a knot in readiness to drop his towel. She stared at the towel rooted to the spot, and she wondered if the rumors based on his cock were true. Draco bit back a laugh and mused. Granger, can you please piss off, or would you rather stay while I shower? 
Her cheeks turned flaming red, throwing him a last look of contempt. She quickly fled the bathroom. She heard him mock her. Oh, I could use the company. I always prefer a woman to wash my back. When Draco entered the headmistress's office, he saw the prefect standing around McGonagall's desk with Hermione. They all seemed to be holding on to a piece of parchment and reading it as their very lives depended on it. Hermione raised her eyebrow at him as if questioning his lateness. Draco ignored her and took the parchment that McGonagall offered. It was a list of events, patrol rosters and schedules of the various classes. McGonagall started to speak. So, as I was saying, we will start the year with a function. She added confidently. This is solely to revive the fallen spirits of the students and for everyone to interact with students of the various schoolhouses. There was an exciting buzz and everyone nodded in agreement. They were quite taken by the idea and Draco rolled his eyes. This doddering old maid would have them all mix and mingle. How bloody wonderful. How you go about it and execute, I leave solely up to you and the head girl and boy. McGonagall concluded, looking at Draco and Hermione, a tad bit sternly. Draco and Hermione swamped a look and stared daggers at each other. How were they supposed to forget the past and become best friends? However, Hermione nodded in agreement, eager to please the headmistress. Of course, Professor. You can count on us. Draco bit back and asked a remark, the little kiss us. Taking charge, she turned to address everyone in the room, including the sulking idiot who had by. Shall we all meet in the headstorms after classes? Hermione asked the prefects only, looking at Draco. Are you all right with that? He threw a look of surprise. She had actually asked for his opinion. Caught off guard, he quickly replied. Yeah, whatever, that sounds fine, Granger. Hermione acknowledged his response with a slight smile. Everyone made their way out of McGonagall's office, chatting excitedly among themselves about the ball. They parted ways to attend today's classes. McGonagall sighed with immense relief and stared after the chattering group as they left her office. Something troubling you, Minerva? The portrait of Severus Snape asked with keen interest. I do hope they don't end up killing each other. She replied sadly. I do feel Mr. Maffoy has a lot to offer, and if anyone can bring that out, it will be Miss Granger. Dumbledore's portrait weighed in. Let's have some faith, he added cheerfully. The portrait of Severus Snape looked anything but hopeful. Later that night, Hermione had arranged drinks and snacks when Draco came out of his room ready to help and cooperate. The infuriating woman seemed to have everything under control. She attempted to lift the beanbags. He watched in amusement, wondering why she didn't use her wand. Unable to control himself, he asked, Why the hell don't you use your wand? She seemed embarrassed, like she had forgotten the existence of it. Sheepishly pulling it out of a pair of bright pink shorts, she waved it, and everything fell into place at once. See, wasn't that easier? Draco asked sarcastically. Trying not to look at her figure-hugging white t-shirt, he closed the distance between them and asked, What do you need me to do, Granger? Hands on hips, she looked around and surveyed the area. It was all done. Before Hermione could answer, there was a loud knock at the door, and Draco jogged over to open it. Jenny, Luna, Justin, Michael, Pansy, and a few others came into the common room, laughing and talking. They were getting along splendidly. They all picked a place to sit, settled down, and grabbed the snacks. After about three hours of deliberation, they decided on a theme, music, food, and decorations. Money was shocked to discover that Malfoy, were not being an enormous knob, was quite easy to work with and had interesting and fun ideas to boot. He knew a thing or two about throwing a successful party. His family had functions at the manor all the time. It was getting pretty late, so after delegating tasks to the assigned teams, Hermione dismissed the prefect and reviewed her notes. She was adamant the event went off without any issues. 
She let out a sigh of exhaustion after everyone left. Draco drawled. Well, that went well. It did, thank you, he replied enthusiastically. He raised a questioning eyebrow. Why the hell are you thanking me? Merlin, he was infuriating. She rolled her eyes at him and purposely walked away. He stared after her, stormed into his room and banged the door shut. To be continued. Thank you for listening to this chapter of Always Mine by Sam RDW. If you'd like to stay up to date on upcoming chapters and stories, you can follow me on YouTube, Spotify or AO3.